Hold on on tight tight for the next next hour. hour. You're entering entering into a place, a zone zone called called the alternative to the alternative media. It's a place, a special place, where even truth seekers fear to tread. All right, people, let's move like we've got a purpose. Affirmative. Okay, Greg Anthony here, and glad you're back on the Investigative Journal on this April 3rd, 2017 day on our calendar. In the last couple of weeks, I've been doing a lot of shows on uh, the intolerance of uh, Islam, and I've gotten a lot of criticism, but yet a lot of uh, good email emails uh, regarding the subject. And uh, today, what I wanted to do was continue because I found a very important interview done by a Canadian journalist talking to an ex-Muslim woman about the dangers of Islam and Sharia law to Western civilization. And isn't it funny, uh, why don't we have more American journalists talking about the truth behind Islam? And the reason is most of the mainstream media is bought and sold and controlled by the Vatican-led New World Order, who wants to bring in all of these uh, open borders all over the Western civilization, in a sense, to destroy it. Now, the interview you'll find interesting, and I'm going to play it in a minute, but I also found something that just happened uh, recently. Uh, In Montana, there was a law, uh, there was a bill passed in the Senate, but it it was passed on party lines, and there were 46 Democrats that voted against this bill. And the bill was to ban Sharia law in state courts. And the reason is, is because it would uh, subvert our Constitution. But 46 Democrats voted against that, wanting Sharia law to be used in our state courts. But do they even know what it is? They can't, because... They said it was racist not to allow this, sent a bad message to Muslims. But do they really know that Sharia law allows stonings, amputations, the killing of gay people, uh, the institutionalized degradation of women and non-Muslims, the denial of freedom of speech and freedom of conscience? (laughs) You know, you can see what's happening here. And... It is just amazing to me that 46 Democrats would vote against that bill that just uh, passed 56 to 46, I believe, in Montana to ban Sharia law, which is a good thing. Now, let's go to this interview of this ex-Muslim woman that took place in Canada, okay? Now, uh, one of the uh, comments to this presentation... uh, was this a woman from Canada stated this. It's really sad. Most Canadians, and I will add this, Americans, are not even aware if of what's going on. And there, this, there's so much been propaganda about Islam being tolerant and that Islam is a religion of peace. For those who really don't uh, know, it's not. Now, please, she says, wake up. And she says, all levels of government around the world have been infiltrated And uh, we talk about that on this show a lot. So let's go to this interview. I thought it was worth playing of an ex-Muslim woman who told the truth about Islam. And what she's telling will really shock you. Here we go. The extreme pleasure of sitting with Sandra Solomon, who you have been introduced to online as the lady who protested at the Peel District School Board. Hello, Sandra, and thank you for joining us. Hello, thank you so much for having me here. It's my honor. Well, first off, let's talk about who you are. Who is okay. Sandra Solomon? Uh, well, my name is Sandra Solomon. I'm the founder of Canadian uh, Against Islamization uh, Movement. Uh, I'm ex-Muslim myself, and uh, I came to Canada about 11 years ago. I immigrated to Canada. Uh, I was uh, raised all my life in Saudi Arabia, between Saudi Arabia and Jordan. Really? Yes. Well, in the Peel District School Board last month, we had a vote that was taking place to allow Arabic and Muslim students to pray in Arabic Mm -hmm. in publicly funded schools where Christians, I see your Christian cross, are not allowed to do so. You then raised this book in the air, the Quran, and began 
to tell the crowd, to educate the crowd. Right. What were you saying? Um, I was telling them that Quran, it's a hate literature, and uh, uh, Islam, it's a terrorist ideology. And yeah. I was uh, warning Canada about uh, this decision that they're bringing the Quran and the Islamic teaching uh, to the Canadian school. And uh, because I know this is the part of the plan of the Islamization movement that they're trying to bring uh, Islam to the school and to brainwash the kids as early as possible with Islamic teaching. What is the goal for Islam to brainwash our kids? What is the end game for them in doing this? Uh, of course, they want to convert the kids as early as possible uh, to Islam, and they want to uh, let them also, you know, live Islamic culturally, uh, you know, adapt uh, Islamic values and, and try to, uh, like for the girls to let them wear the hijab and for the boys, you know, uh, the lifestyle, the Islamic lifestyle, the Islamic culture lifestyle. So slowly, slowly they want to, this is the implementing of Sharia Allah. In, in schools. And of course, yeah. you and I are dead set against that. Of course, that. big time. <laughs> yes. So let's go back now to Saudi Arabia. Yes. Yes. You indicated uh, when you were talking at the Peel District School Board yeah. that they took your son from you. Yes. You've witnessed a lot of death and murder. Yeah. And you had to escape the country as right. a woman. Could you right. clarify that? Uh, yes. Uh, uh, I, I face uh, so many uh, things like I lived under Sharia law. Saudi Arabia, it's 100% um, Sharia law constitution. And that's what they teach us as we're young. That's why I was holding the Quran. They teach us that the Quran is our constitution. So to um, them, this is the government here in the Quran. They don't govern by Canadian law or Canadian values. They govern by Sharia law, by what's the, what says in the Quran. This is the constitution. So in Saudi Arabia, uh, we learned the Islamic, um, you know, the Quran and the Hadith. I was uh, fully uh, understanding what Islam is all about. And um, uh, I face uh, so many uh, a problem when I used to live in Saudi Arabia. I, I was forced to wear the hijab if I'm refusing. I was physically abused a lot just because I refused the hijab. Wow. And uh, um, they forced me into a marriage. Forced marriage, it's part of uh, Islamic uh, way of life. Women, and, and, uh, women in Islam, it's a second class citizen. They don't have freedom of speech. They cannot... Uh, live um, freely and uh, there's no free thoughts there's no free speech in sharia law and um, and uh, uh, i faced so many problems as well when since i was in school as well they kicked me out from school many times uh, i lost opportunity to uh, continue my education just because i was always arguing and questioning islam which is this is a considered a blasphemy you're not a, a, you're not allowed to question you just have to submit and submit and no question asked so as an intelligent individual which yes. I can tell that you are yeah you see through this book yeah you see through it all right just like I myself see through most of our Canadian statutes and laws right. I don't accept them yeah. so you've been outspoken about this yeah and that forced you to have to leave your country of birth right and uh, when uh, things happen, you know, through my life, you know, when I came to Canada, uh, I, I came with my son. But at a certain time, I had to leave him a little bit with uh, his dad after hardly I got my divorce. You know, it wasn't easy as well. And um, when I uh, told them, like, years later, it's like, a, it's, it's a long story, but I'm cut it short. Uh, when I told them that um, I left Islam, I'm a Christian now. My son at that time was uh, in Saudi Arabia, and they told me you're not you're not gonna come to see him. Uh, uh, we will kill you if you come to Jordan again. And uh, um, you know, I was. Uh, um, they told me you will never see your son again. But praise the Lord, I uh, uh, miraculously I uh, I got my son back to me. And but it wasn't easy. It was really really hard. Where's your son now? He's with me now. In Canada. Yes. In the city Praise of Mississauga. Yes. yes. <laughs> Praise him. Yes. Well done. Good Amen. for you. Yes. Excellent. Yes. Well, the, the Quran itself now. I, am, I have been reading Bill Warner's English translation of this book, and I am blown away by how this thing is structured. My understanding of the book, without the proper interpretations of it, right. is that it's organized from the longest story at the beginning yeah. 
to the shortest story at the end, right. which leaves nothing but controversy and contradiction yes. in between all the pages. Maybe you could clear that up for everybody. Okay, um, the Quran itself, uh, it's it's mixed between the Meccan. We should associate it with the history of Muhammad, the founder of Islam. Uh, if we don't know the history of Muhammad, we have to put it all together with the Quran because it's a Meccan stage and the Medinan stage. It's actually two Qurans in one. Uh, so the Meccan uh, chapters are uh, different than the Medinan uh, chapters. And the, uh, what, what he said in the Medinan um, uh, chapters um, abrogated what, what he said in the Medinan uh, chapters. So, so technically the, we should just just take the Medinan one because the Makian one it's been abrogated. Right. So when you're saying Makian you mean Meccan. Like Mecca. That's, that's in Mecca. Mecca. When yes, he was in Muhammad good. when he was in Mecca for almost thirteen years, you know, he was uh, preaching that he's a prophet, telling people I am a prophet, follow me and people don't not listen to him and he was uh, trying to deceive them using uh, the taqiyya and uh, lying and pretending that he's a nice guy he's bringing your religion and uh, you have your religion i have my religion you know these all like makian uh verses that the uh, muslims they always use it when they're in a, a stage you know like for when they're in a makian stage like uh, like for now like the makian the muslim now in canada they're playing the makian stage taqiyya okay. and deceive until they have a full, uh, a full control of the country, then the Madian uh, Quran will appear. So the Meccan <coughs> version of this yes. is the nice version. Yes. Yes, that's the one that's polite and has a little bit a to little do bit. with Even love. Even though it has some, like, obvious word, like it would say, like, Ya ayyuhal kafirun, oh ya infidels. Like, he already started calling the people infidels. Right, the and that's in the good part. Yeah, this is in, from the good side as well. Like, he start, he already labeled, he already put the label of the people who's not gonna follow him, uh, infidels. It's all uh, Muhammad ideology that's been written in this so book. So, it's just one guy wrote this book, It's it just one guy that he, or, yeah. Or better yet, sorry, one guy who dictated notes and someone wrote it down for him. Yes. My understanding was that yes. Muhammad was illiterate. yes. Yes, okay. Abdullah ibn al-Jarrah. There is many uh, people also write it. And actually, surprisingly, one of the people who used to write for Muhammad when he's, uh, you know, um, telling him what to write, and this guy was writing something, uh, like Muhammad, he said something, but he was writing something else. And then he said to him, oh, but isn't better if we say something? He said, okay, just put it this way. So the guy who was writing for him actually left left Muhammad and figure out that he's not a um, a prophet or anything and there's nothing is revealing to him and he actually left him and left uh, the Arabic Peninsula and went uh, to um, Ethiopia and he became Christian the one the one of the guy who was writing okay. for Muhammad let, let, let's just recap what yes. you just said there because yes. that is that's hilarious yes Abdullah ibn Jarrah his name Muhammad yes was dictating notes to someone else yes. to say, I am the prophet, I am the word of Allah. Yes. Everything I say is law because yes, it I'm... comes from Allah. Yes. Then this guy would yes. write something else down. Right. Read back what he yeah. had written. Yes. And Muhammad would just say, yeah, okay, go ahead with that. Yeah, because it's better. the job is done. It's, yeah, exactly. Yes. Like, it fits better because once uh, the people who do not know how to read the Quran in Arabic... Mm -hmm. Uh, that's why I always read, recite the Quran in Arabic because I understand the, the original language of it. Uh, it's like a poem, poetry. It has to fit nice together. So as as he is oh writing, he has to put it together. It's like when you write a poem, you have to put things together. Trial and error. Yeah. Exactly. Testing. Yeah. So that's that's the Quran because the Arabic Peninsula, the region there, it was um, people was famous by poetry, po Arab Understood. people, you know. That's but it was such a farce yes. that even Muhammad's personal scribe yes. said, "The hell with this." Yes. Left the entire Arabic area, yes, the and desert, yes, left yes. and became a Christian. Yes, and he went to uh, wow. Ethiopia and uh, Al Habasha in Arabic, and he became a Christian. What do I say then yes. to any Muslim apologist yes. or any Mohammedan out there who yes. tells me that that is not true? 
well read the story of Abdullah ibn Jarrah like his name is there it's uh, it's been written in the history Tell you what, let's yeah. let's spell that right now for everybody yeah. what's the guy's name Abdullah ibn Jarrah okay you're gonna have to go slow because I don't speak Arabic Abdullah Abdullah <laughs> Ibn Ibn yeah okay Al Jarrah Al Jarrah I yeah. tell you what, people, I'm yes. going to find that name. Don't you worry. There's future videos yes. coming about that name. Yes. 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 Well, I appreciate your time. Thank you very no much problem. for joining us today. Yes, no We'll problem. be in touch soon. Kevin J. Johnston from FreedomReport.ca and the lovely Sandra Solomon here to teach you the truth about the Quran, Mohammedans, and Islam. Okay, he uh, breaks this up into like 10-minute uh, clips. So I'm going to play the next clip, the next time. Uh, he interviews this woman a number of times. I thought it was interesting when she was talking about who wrote the Quran. Who was this guy? Uh, we talked the other day. Remember the video we did the last week? And she was saying that Muhammad was in Mecca when this gentleman from uh, London who was doing research, there was no uh, evidence that Muhammad ever set foot in Mecca. So there's a lot of questions about who wrote this. And if we go to uh, Father Alberto Rivera, who received information from a uh, Cardinal Bea in the Vatican, um, Bea told him that the Vatican was involved in creating this religion and writing the Quran. So let's go back to uh, this ex-Muslim woman from Canada telling us what she knows about Islam. I'm with the lovely Sandra Solomon to talk to you about the Quran and the Islamization of Canada. We uh, talked in our last video about the Peel District School Board, and for those of you out there that don't know what that means, Peel Region is a culmination of three cities, Mississauga, Brampton, and Caledon, which are to the extreme west of the city of Toronto in the province of Ontario, Canada. Our Peel, Peel District School Board, I've met some of these people, and I'll tell you what they are, is gutless. They are absolutely ready to surrender on a moment's notice just because a couple of Muslims scream out. Sandra has protested there, and I have protested with my own letter. And as an expert on the Quran, I'd like Sandra to tell me if I'm right or wrong. My letter starts off to the Beale Board of Education. My name is Kevin J. Johnston. Before I begin speaking to you, I demand the women among you lower your gaze. Quran 24 31. Am I right? Yes, they have to lower their uh, voice and they have to submit and they have to be... This is the good Muslim woman. That's how they should so act. A good Muslim woman has yeah. to look at the floor yes. when a man is speaking or just is it when a man's in the room. How does that work? Yes, of course. It's uh, like uh, in Arabic, like they have to keep their eyes down when, then, when they speak to uh, men and they're not allowed to shake hands with men. And they're not even allowed to associate, like, to work with men. With men, like, and I lived in Saudi Arabia. Everything is separate. Actually, the girls they will have their own schools, and the boy have their own schools. There's no mixed school under Sharia law. You cannot do that. Oh my lord. Yeah. Yes. Wow. My second uh, sentence was: In addition, if there are any women among you who are unclean, meaning menstruating, I would ask that you leave the room. And that's Quran five six. Please, is that true? Yes, uh, because uh, under Sharia law, uh, you know, uh, women uh, they consider filthy, and uh, they're they're not clean. Um, the men even like uh, it says in the Quran, that's mean if you touch a woman, a woman, and if you go second, the second one, like they he, the Quran actually describe women as. A boo -boo, like the second one, it's in the Quran. Oh my lord! Yeah. So you're yeah. like you're like a scab. Like yeah, a you're cut. like yeah, like you're, you're healthy. You're not clean. If a man touch a woman, he has to go wash himself. Why do you think then that women in Canada are defending Islamic uh, uh, prayers and Islamic groups that want to bring Sharia law here? Why are white Canadian women protecting this and telling men like me that I'm wrong yeah. to talk about this? Uh, first of all, because they're ignorant and they're betrayers, and uh, I'm sure uh, yes, they, they, they're getting paid very well. And also, they're uh, the Muslims deceiving them using the taqiyya. They're not telling them the truth, and they don't want to know the truth. 
Because well, tikkia is the rule in this book the that says lie, lie, lie. You have to. If you don't lie, you're not Muslim. Really? Yeah. You have rule to number lie. one. Is, yeah, it's rule number one. You have tikkia. To lie. Yes. Wow. Yeah, deceiving <clears throat> until you got what you want. Until uh, you're you're the upper hand. You know, you you make them submit to you uh, by deceiving. By they're deceived as well. And we have to. Uh, when we're talking to them, we want to educate them. It's not like we're enemy for them. Uh, we're bringing the evidence. We're right. bringing everything that from the Quran, from the Hadith, from Imams themselves. They're saying this. So what else they want? We got all. It's not like just we're bringing something from our own heads. I can provide with every. That's why in the Peel District School, I have lots of bunch of papers with me, and I keep repeating. I have evidence. I have evidence. I wanted to give them the evidence of what I'm what I'm saying. Well, you're asking um, <clears throat> Janet McDougal yeah. to do something other than scream and yell at white Canadians that pay her salary. Yeah. She is a psychopath. There's, there's a lot wrong with her. I, I've yes. met her. I despise her in every way. And the school board, during our next municipal election, you'd be wise to get her out. Trust me. Yeah. Regardless, my third uh, statement here is... I would also like to ask the men holding this letter, if you have shaken hands with or touched your menstruating colleagues, please rub your hands in dirt and then wash them in water so that you are clean. And that's Quran 5.6 as well. Is that one true? Yes. Uh, <clears throat> they have to wash. The, if a man is not allowed to, to touch a, a woman who is not his wife or shake hands, even just to shake hands with them, do you see every, all the time, many Muslims, they don't shake hands, either man or woman. They, they refuse to shake the hands. Like this is uh, this is part of Sharia law. It's part of the Quran. Again, the Quran is the constitution. Whatever the Quran is telling them to do, they will do it blindly. They will just have to follow. So when they're not allowed to shake hands, they're not Muslims allowed. Are, you're not allowed to shake hands with each other, with men and women? No, 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 no. Hmm? It, this is like considered... They have to go make wudu, they have to wash themselves, it's because the women are filthy to them, like they're not considered filthy. They're not wow. They're not allowed to shake hands. With women? No, with women, no, of course not. Oh my lord. You can't even, like in Sharia law, women supposedly, they have to uh, fully cover the, the niqab, the, not just like the eyes, no, 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 under Sharia law, it has to be fully covered, even though the face covering it's not mentioned in the Quran but culturally they have to like under Sharia law how happy do you think Canadian women are going to be when Sharia law is brought into certain communities and white Canadian women are forced to put that on what do you think is gonna happen then uh, they are gonna start rebel and they are gonna start uh, talking open you know they're gonna open their eyes to the truth but it's going to be too late for them. They have to submit. Otherwise, the Sharia police will hit them with the sticks, like what they did to many women in Saudi Arabia. And I witnessed this. The Sharia police, they don't uh, give them the freedom to speak or to criticize. And it's going to be too late for them. They have to submit. They're a slave. Yeah, that's woman. Slave. Sex slave. Sex slave, yes. Yeah. Well, what about then? <clears throat> there is a ruling... Um, in the Middle East about the fact that a man is now allowed to have sex with his wife up to six hours after her death. Yes. What would be the starting of something like that? Uh, the starting of that, uh, it's a fatwa from uh, many uh, imams. And that's Muslims also, they go by fatwas. Whatever the imam tells them to do, mm -hmm. they will do it. Because after Muhammad's death, there is many... Uh, interpretation for Quran, explanations, and uh, many uh, scholars, many Muslim scholars. So Muslim actually they don't think for themselves. What makes me leave Islam because I start thinking for myself. I don't want nobody to. I'm not a, a follower. I'm a leader. I'm not gonna, just gonna take this and just submit to it. So uh, having sex with a dead woman, uh, Muhammad himself he did it. Okay, so I have to take a break here. Quite interesting. We'll be back in. Uh three minutes after this short break on the investigative journal visit crossthborder.org c-r-o-s-s crossthborder.org to get your print epub 
or PDF version of Nicholas Arthur's new book titled When the Third Temple is Built. That's CrossTheBorder.org. When it comes to prophecy today, much of the evangelical Christian world has their eyes on Israel, waiting and watching to see when the third temple will begin to be built. The plans are drawn. The Jewish people are eager. Most evangelical Christians today believe that the rapture will happen before the third temple is built. Hi, I'm Michael Eugene. I was taught that Daniel's 70th week was in the future. Is that really what the Bible teaches? Have we searched the scriptures and found this to be true? Why is it so important for a re-established Israel to build a third temple in Jerusalem? Is it necessary to build a temple on the same location already occupied by the Dome of the Rock? Is it necessary for sacrifices to take place in the temple on Temple Mount? Is there really a rapture followed by seven years of tribulation? What is the New Testament temple? Can we identify history and prophecy? Who is the first beast in Revelation chapter 13? Who are the seven kings in Revelation 17? I have asked all these questions and I have found Nicholas Arthur's new book, When the Third Temple is Built, answers all these questions and more using scripture to interpret scripture. The Bible says that no prophecy of scripture is of any private interpretation. Nicholas shows us in his new book, When the Third Temple is Built, how the Bible interprets prophecy and not man's private interpretation. Visit Cross the Border dot org c r o s s cross the border dot org to get your print epub or pdf version of nicholas arthur's new book titled when the third temple is built that's cross the border dot org the book of revelation says the spirit of prophecy is the testimony of jesus christ this is at the very heart of firstamendmentradio.com in that spirit, we have created the Prophecy Reality News app for all of your mobile devices. Streaming First Amendment Radio 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. Available for your Apple, Android device, and smartphone absolutely free. Get the Prophecy Reality News app installed today so you can listen to First Amendment Radio wherever you are. The Prophecy Since the beginning of time, Kings have sought it, nations have fought for it, it has been traded, it has been borrowed, it has been purchased, it has been stolen, there's a reason for it. To secure the blessings of liberty to ourselves and to our posterity, invest with the security of gold and silver. Call Discount Gold and Silver Trading at 1-800-375-4188 or visit DiscountGoldAndSilverTrading.net. Listen to Financial Survival with your host, Melody Cedarstrom, right here on FirstAmendmentRadio.com at 4 p.m. Eastern or 1 p.m. Pacific Time. Visit DiscountGoldAndSilverTrading.net or call Discount Gold and Silver Trading at 1-800-375-4188. Toll free, 1-800-375-4188. The following, the following program, program is labeled dangerous, dangerous and off-limits limits by the, by the Supreme, Supreme Jesuit, Jesuit Command. command. But stand tall, people. people. Listen, listen, up, listen up, and you, you may, may just, just learn, learn something. something. Oh, dear Lord Jesus, this ain't happening, man. This can't be happening, man. This ain't happening. Okay, we're back for the second half hour of the Investigative Journal on this Mar oh, March. We're already into April, Greg. April 3rd. 2017 day on our calendar and uh, two things to take from that first half hour one she said that the Quran instructs uh, <clears throat> followers of Islam to deceive and lie about the true intentions once Sharia law is implemented and I think uh, that goes on here as well in America as it is in Canada. And isn't it interesting that many of these liberal feminists support uh, Islam, but yet it's a religion that persecutes women? Makes absolutely no sense. And uh, think about those two things as we go back. We're going to continue with uh, this ex-Muslim woman from Canada telling us some of the hidden truths about uh, Islam and the Quran. Yeah. Oh. He had sex with oh. a woman. And oh. uh, uh, so even when they saw him doing this, yeah. the follower, they said, uh, Oh, Prophet, we never see something like this. 
So he said to them, oh, I was uh, trying to make the punishment of, because they believe in Islam, the grave, when people die, they will be punished in the grave. Like before they go to this is the punishment in the grave. So he said, I was I was uh, making it easy on her, whatever he was trying. So people like uh, even the people at his time, they, they were surprised because never happened before. He, Muhammad is the first one started um, to say it's OK, it's halal to have sex with that woman. Oh my, and halal means proper. Um, halal means it's permitted. It's permitted. OK. Yes. Oh, okay. Well, I did speak with a Lebanese Christian about this, and what he was saying is that for men, this religion, if you could call it that, is all about one thing, sex, sex, sex. Those were his words to me, yeah. that everything in here yeah. is telling men that it's okay to have sex with anything you want, yeah. whether the person that you're having sex with wants you to or not. Yeah. Could you comment on that? Of course. Women in Islam, uh, it's a uh, sex uh, object. And uh, in Islam, uh, permitting uh, having sex with uh, uh, pre precedent girls, like young girls, before they got their period, there it's okay to, uh, you know, have sex with her. It's I okay. can't even talk about that without getting mad. Yes, and um, it's, per- it's halal, Surah 65, verse 4, you know, it's there. And uh, many, many verses talking about sex, and uh, many verses, many hadith as well. And what Muhammad did, don't forget, Muhammad, the founder of Islam, and one very important thing, we need to stop calling Islam a religion. This is this is a big mistake that people always do. It's not religion. It's a political ideology wrapped up with religion. It's not religion. It's cult. Islam yes. is cult. We need to stop calling it religion. We have to call it for what it is. Okay. Well, that, I will do that. I'm no longer using the term Muslim either. I'm using the term Mohammedan. Muhammadan or bandits and thugs because Muhammad was bandit and thug. Yeah. Yes, he was. I'll read the yes. last point here on this letter and then we'll move on. Yes. Um, I also say here that you should also take note that after reading this letter, it should turn out that two men vote against four women on the decision before you, and those four women vote against the two men, then the decision shall fall to the two men as the value of ladies is half that of your male colleagues. That's Quran 411 and 4176. Is that true? Yes, because uh, when women appear in a court or anywhere, her uh, witnessing, it's not uh, taken. Uh, It has to be um, like, uh, it has to be with the two women. And because also the women, when they inherit, uh, like two men for one woman, like the equal. And uh, women, uh, her witnessing, it's not taken uh, uh, serious. It, it, it has to be, yeah. So if they're in a court of law, yeah. and there are two women yeah. and one man, yeah. even if the two of them state that he killed my yeah. father, yeah. his if he says no, he did not, he wins. Yes, he won. Yeah, because the... Three women are required. Yeah. So that's like, 1.5 human beings Yes. To, that's to why one. they considered women under Sharia law it says women they don't have full brain they don't they're not like they don't have a full brain yeah they don't have full brain like her their brain it's not full it's not developed like it's not fully developed men uh, under sharia law women always always have to have a, a guardian like a man guardian to to to, to, I, to tell her what to do and what not to do can i ask this question here yeah because the fact that you, I didn't know that it said half a brain. I knew it said half the value, yes, but I didn't know it said half a brain. And, the and that pisses me off. Yes. So my real question now is, how does a criminal like Bonnie Crombie, the mayor of Mississauga, the sixth biggest, possibly the fifth biggest city yeah. in the country now, right. how does she not, as a woman, be repulsed by the fact that the people who are supporting her and whom she is supporting yeah. believe she has half a brain? Actually, and also under Sharia law, women should not be in a position to be a mayor or responsible of anything in the country. It has to be male. It has to be male. It's against Sharia law. Like when, if let's say Canada, God forbid, became Sharia law, all these women, they would have to uh, leave their positions. They're not allowed under Sharia law. And then they'll be told they have half They brain. have, they have to have, yes, they're not, they're not, uh, they're not um, qualified to, to rule or to make decisions. So how they're going to make them mayor or 
or even these, the school board uh, yeah, well, women, they're not allowed. Let me tell you something. As a man, I'm the first one to say that 95% of men are not qualified to do much more than pull up their own pants. Yeah. So for, for me to hear what you just said, yes. this book makes me extremely angry. Yeah. I married a woman who has three degrees. Three. She's working on another one now. We're yeah. talking about someone who has twice my brain capacity. Right. Smart yeah. is sexy. And for, yeah. for this book to tell me that I would now have to look for someone who's a moron or try to convince my wife who has this much education right. that she is stupid because this book is sitting on my desk yeah. is highly offensive yes. and highly angry. How do I, how do I yeah. deal with this now? With idiots like Justin Trudeau telling me that I'm not allowed to even talk about that. Well, uh, that's what we're doing here. You know, we're exposing Islam. We're telling people what's the truth about it. And we're bringing all the evidence. And people should listen to us. They should listen to you. And whatever we're saying, it's not uh, propaganda. Where We don't have to lie to make Islam look bad. It's already bad enough. And we have every evidence from Imam, Canadian Imam themselves, talking openly about uh, women being sex slave. Uh, Dr. Iqbal Al-Nadvi, uh, he is the um, uh, chairperson Canadian Council of, he is the Canada top imam, the leader of ECNA Canada. He openly talking about uh, be, uh, beating uh, in Islam as a type of education, beating up the women. Oh, they have to be, this is the Canadian top imam. Every imam in Canada, he has to go through this man, Dr. Iqbal Al-Nadvi, and I was always challenging openly to, to debate me, and I was trying to... Why is he not in jail for, for hate crimes against women? Uh, because we have a betrayed government. We have a Trudeau who betrayed Canada and given it all the way to these guns and bandits, and they, uh, they say whatever they want to say, and they're protected because the government <clears throat> fighting us. They're not fighting for us. Canadians need to wake up and realize this. The Canadian government betrayed us, all of them. Whoever in the government building right now and the parliament, all of them, all liberals, they should just... They should be in prison for treason. All of them. Yes, High yes, treason. Yes, very, very, because... Uh, Criminal Code of Canada, Section 46. Read it. Exactly. Many, uh, as, as you go ahead and read uh, the Toronto police uh, chaplain, he said marrying nine years old girl is permissible. Uh, Muslim Khan. What else? Like we have so many evidence with Canadian imams, uh, with, with and, uh, they're speaking openly about uh, beating the wife, marrying young girls, uh, taking sex slave openly in on a Canadian soil in a free country, and they use the freedom uh, to to destroy the freedom. And when we talk, criticize, yes. we are the one who's considered blasphemers. You know, that's, yes. that's, that's the Sharia law. Oh, read yeah. my comment section, people. What you'll find is that Canadians who are second, third, and fourth generation agree with me, and yeah. all these other idiots that were born after 2000 do nothing but insult me. Yeah. And I do get death threats on the phone quite a bit. Yes, because uh, this is this is part of the Sharia law. Uh, whoever say anything or criticize Sharia Allah in the Quran, it says under Sharia Allah, it should be killed or crucified or cut the hands and the legs at the opposite side. Oh, I did say that in my letter. Oh, I was going to okay. ask you if that was yeah. true. Yes, okay. Yes. Here is what I said. Um, thinking about insulting the fictional character, Allah, or his prophet, the penalty is death. Yeah. Quran 2968. Or if you prefer, in Quran 533, you'll have your hands and feet cut off and then be crucified Jesus style. Um, is that true? That's true. I, I knew it was true. Uh, yeah, I mean, yeah. I took this from yes. from the Quran itself. Yes, yes. Uh, uh, now, all what okay. they need to do, open the Quran right? and read. How what simple. I, what I want to ask them is this, all right? There are Muslims in Canada, Mohammedans in Canada, who Muhammad. are Mohammedans, who are born here. And they probably don't believe this stuff. But how is it then that when I talk about crucifixion as part of the book itself, that they want to tell me that I'm wrong? These are If you're Canadian born as a Mohammedan, you are probably into hockey and chicken wings and beer and strip yeah. joints, masturbation, f***ing as many women as you possibly can. You're probably without condoms. 
because that is what freedom is supposed to be. Then how is it you can see all these wonderful things the country has to offer <coughs> yeah. and then still defend the book? Because uh, they've been brainwashed uh, when they young, and they've been uh, they've been told this is only at the war time when Muhammad was defending himself, which is Muhammad never and never all his attacks was attack Ghazwa. They call it the Ghazwa. He right. never he never was in Ghazwa. a position. Yes, Muhammad never never was in a position in on a defending himself. Never he was the, always the one who. Um, always the attacker. Always never the defended. attacker, never uh, to be uh, offended. And uh, I will let you. I will tell you later about um, short, uh, like uh, six minutes. I'll tell you exactly how Muhammad started. We're going to cover that yeah. in our next video. Yeah. Okay, so we're going to do that in just a second. And uh, quite interesting, some of the things uh, she's saying, don't you think? And a lot of it applies to here as well. I mean, there's no difference. When she said Can the Canadian government is sold out, so is ours. And uh, we're allowing the same imams here to preach the same thing. And we're allowing, uh, in fact, radical groups all over our country to uh, go about preaching death to America. Makes no sense. But at the same time, our government has decided to persecute <clears throat> excuse me, <clears throat> Christian ministries who, like the Tony Alamo ministry, who do not preach anything but the Bible. Very interesting. Okay, let's get back to Kevin T. Johnson interviewing this ex-Muslim woman who's telling us something that many people need to listen to. I'm with the lovely Sandra Solomon, who is an expert in this book right here, the Quran mistakenly known as the Holy Quran, because after reading as much of it as I have, I can tell you there's nothing holy about it. Sandra, would you please go ahead and tell us how Muhammad got started? Okay, uh, Muhammad, uh, when he was in Mecca, so we have to understand uh, uh, the environment, uh, what the people used to do there in Mecca. Uh, people, Mecca was a, a, a multicultural city. It has Jews, Christian, it has all kind of, uh, it's a multi pagans, you know, people going around the Kaaba, the cube, uh, doing a Hajj, doing pilgriming. So the Hajj, uh, it was a pagan ritual before. Uh, so Muhammad uh, and Ramadan, it was also a pagan uh, ritual. So, and they used to go around the Kaaba also half naked. And after they finish, they go and have sex, whatever. Oh, so this my is, kind of party. Yeah, this yeah. is yeah. This is this is part of the pagan ritual. They bring the idols in the Kaaba at the cube, and they bring uh, they do um, you know like with the drums and whatever, and they go around the Kaaba. So story short, Muhammad he starts, uh, and also there was the region has a like a, a false uh, prophets and cults. You know, there's many things, and there was what? a guy. His name is Musaylima. This guy. So that word Muslim came from that man. His name is Musaylima, and he was claiming that he's a prophet and he has a Quran, and he was uh, doing his Quran a poetry and people like him, blah blah blah. So Muhammad felt guilt, felt jealous, and he got uh, he said, okay, uh, because the Waraka bin Nawfal, uh, the the uncle of his first wife Khadija, uh, they're also being a heretic Christian, like they're being kicked out from the church because they start heresy against the Christian faith. So they went to, to Arabic Peninsula and uh, he got connected with them. That's why also Muhammad uh, uh, knew, knew a little bit about the Bible, about the Old Testament. That's why many things in the Quran, it has a connection with the Jews and the Christian and mainly Jews and Christians. Uh, so Muhammad felt jealous and he wanted to claim that he's a prophet. So he started, you know, uh, doing the da'wah. They call it da'wah. That's the same word. Uh, they're still using it. And claiming that he's a prophet. When so no one, Dawah just means to Dawah preach. to 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 tell the yeah, no. prophet. Yeah, to, to tell, tell them, I'm a, uh, okay, I'm a prophet. I'm bringing religion. Follow me. Mm. Nobody follow him. Like very very few people. Uh, for 13 years, he's trying to convince people that he's a prophet, and no no one buy that because they said they told him you're crazy or majnoon in Arabic. And so he's a terrible car salesman. Yes, and uh, Muhammad, his personality, Muhammad, he has a lot of psychological issue. 
because what happened to him when he like he was orphaned and the Muslim believed that he was uh, his name Muhammad Abdullah which is not true because no one really know who's his dad because they, they still believe that he was born four years after the death of his father so Muhammad felt uh, jealous and got envy and got revenge and he started hatred he was a hateful person he wasn't uh, like a normal person and he has a lot of psychological issues so be, be to, for him to be able to succeed uh, he got connected with a group of people a group of bandits and thugs uh, they called in Arabic Al-Sa'aliq Al-Sa'aliq these people uh, Al-Sa'aliq uh, in Arabic uh, bandits and thugs these bandits and thugs they used to live in the mountains outside the uh, tribe Mecca and Medina it's a, like a tribal region and a Quraysh tribe they were trying to keep the peace because it's a, a trade market so they were trying to keep the peace with every religion or every uh, cult or whatever they want to keep everyone in peace because they don't want to lose the the trade you know coming from the north uh, going to the south you know between and uh, the north and the south Yemen and al -Sham. so Muhammad um, uh, went to these bandits and thugs these bandits and thugs are criminals like they ashamed their tribe so they kick them out of the tribe. They're not longer allowed so to. So the, the rapists, the thieves, the, the murderers. The thieves, the murderers, the criminal, you know. So Muhammad got connected with them. They're, they're serial killers and they don't fear death. They don't. They just want to kill and, and rape and do their own thing. So at that time, you know, I always say that if we don't understand what happened 1400 years ago, we will never understand what's going on now. So to recap that. He tried to get normal people like yeah. you and I to follow him and believe in him. Yeah. Everyone rejected him. Yes. So he left town, yes. went to the mountains and found all the creeps, the thieves, the liars, the murderers, and convinced him the mentally unstable. Exactly. Mentally okay. unstable. Good. Uh, they're already uh, criminals. Uh, they're ready to fight. They don't care. You know, so they, these thugs and bandits, they used to attack caravan, kill the men, and take a woman, six slaves, and take the kids and rape them and train them to be yeah. like them. So Muhammad, he connected with them and he said to them, um, follow me, like help me with my da'wah, help me with my claim, uh, and I will give, why are you living in a mountain? I will give you land, I will give you more women, and I will give you more spoils, more ghana'im in Arabic, and more uh, kids. So they said, okay, we'll follow you, you know, they, they don't care, because he gave them what they actually looking for. So, and they, he took uh, took them to a Medina. That's why he did immigration, hijrah. When people immigrate to Canada to go, this is the, the this is part of the plan. What Muhammad did, he immigrated to Medina. And when he started in Medina, started the army, uh, and he started playing politically. That's why I always say Islam, it's a political. Um, he started playing, you know, there was an Aus al-Khazraj, there was many, many, many tribes. And these tribe, it's normal. All the tribes, it's a, um, they used to fight over water, over uh, anything, uh, to power, you know, who's bigger than who, stuff like that. Like our modern social justice. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. Yes. It's the same. People yes. never change, you know. Uh, um, you know when King Solomon, he said nothing new under the sun? It's the same, it's the same thing, it's been repeated. So Muhammad used the fight between tribes using these thugs. Like these thugs, it's like when you're renting someone, when people rent a, city, a killer for them to do the job. Mercenaries. Exactly. Yes. So he used these people, let's say uh, this tribe hates the other tribe. So they need someone to do the job for them. So they will, Muhammad bring them these thugs and help oh, them boy. to claim that, to believe that he's the prophet. And so the prophet Muhammad yeah, he was, had his own psychopaths that yeah. he had convinced using his own version of the book. Yeah. And then would hire these guys out as mercenaries yeah. to whichever tribe had the most money or the most women or the most water. Yeah, and they fight to each other, you know, and he wants to take over each, you know what I mean? And they, so he used these people, the thugs and the bandits, and slowly, slowly, you know, they, they start, uh, and there was also the big four uh, Jewish uh, tribes in uh, Medina, uh, Banu Qurayda, Banu al nadir Banu Kainuka, Banu Khaybar. And uh, so in Medina, he established the call for jihad. The word jihad started on terror, terrify them, I will cast a terror. All these verses, in the, that's why I always say, 
it, they have two Quran, the Medina, the Medina Quran, the Makian Quran. We don't need to bother with the Makian Quran because it's that's it. We don't have to. It's not. We cannot apply Makian Quran for today time. We have to do the Medina time, uh, Medina Quran. So that's why he started calling. He uh, called you know uh, everyone who do not believe in him or Allah, the Satan, the, uh, you know, and uh, uh, an infidel, and they should be killed. So he adapt the bandit law, and the Sharia law is the bandit law technically so whatever these bandits and thugs they used to have every mafia group they have their own rule right so this, this entire is, book it's is the rules oh, that were used by muhammad to keep his thugs in control exactly and in rank and file exactly so that's why they started and he came back to mecca when he started the first army like more than uh, 300 uh, bandits and thugs he collect them all and train them and make the swords and everything when they're ready, he went back to Mecca, and he start genociding and killing, and he start calling for jihad. وقاتلوهم وقاتل الذين لا يؤمنون بالله ولا باليوم الآخر حتى من الذين أوتوا الكتاب حتى يعطوا الجزية عن يد وهم صغيرون. Fight who do not believe in Allah in the last days from the people of the book, the Jews and the Christians, until they give the jizya, which is you know like. Like a mafia. The, the, the tax. Yes. You have to and pay so, a tax to live if you're not going to be Muslim. Uh, yeah, it's yes. like, a, it's a mafia. You know, give me the money or I'll kill you. That's that's how it is. Uh, bandits and thugs. So uh, that's how, uh, uh, and he, start, he established in Mecca after he killed many people, genociding, genociding. And uh, he kept, that's why Islam, it's a collection <coughs> of like, see the Hajj, the pilgriming. It was already there. So he kept the ritual, and he started collecting some ritual here and there for people to practice to cover it with religion, to give that religious coverage, and it's Allah, it's God who is telling me to do this. So he just made the whole thing up? Yeah, he made the whole thing up, and uh, yeah. and people start, because again, these bandits and thugs, they have no fear of death in their heart, like they will kill with no mercy, they won't have a mercy. That's why when you see the true Muslim, ISIS, Hamas, Boko Haram, Al-Qaeda, Taliban, these are the true Muslims. Whatever ISIS is doing, they're 100%, 100% uh, doing exactly what uh, Muhammad did and what Muhammad, uh, what the Quran is telling them to do. And that's But do, you, do Muslims, we'll, we'll say moderate Muhammadans, the ones who are born outside of the Middle East and in the West, do they know this? Most of them. I'll answer that, a no. And that's why we're playing this uh, tape and anyway come back tomorrow we're all out of time on the investigative journal have a good evening and see you tomorrow the program you are listening to is 100 percent sponsored by you the listener on this first amendment rights media channel you will notice that there are few commercials on this radio network there's a good reason for that Corporate advertising dollars come with strings that limit program content. So without your help, these programs cannot continue on Internet or our several affiliates. If you benefit by the educational law programs, we ask you to give. If you are admonished or nurtured by the Bible and ministry programs, we ask you to give. If some voice a cause that you are passionate about, we ask you to give. If you believe in any of these, we ask you to support them as you would a missionary on a continual basis, as if giving a tithe for Missionary Radio. These programs are not commercially viable and must be supported by those faithful to the cause of truth. Look for the button to sponsor your favorite programs at our Listen and Schedule pages on the Internet. Then, when you subscribe, we will send you the last quarterly MP3 CD of that program immediately and continue to do so with each new quarter. We will also give you unlimited archive access to all of our programs. We're asking you to give much less than a tithe so that you may also send support directly to a particular program host, cause, and anywhere else the Spirit may lead you. Do all to the glory of our God and Creator for his holy nation, the only kingdom that will last forever. Thank you for listening.